We're thankful that for every listener that's faithful to God and especially the members of Central Baptist Church where Christ is central and Jesus is Lord. And we want to announce that tonight we'll be having an assembly together at the Meyer Park uh, Center where we've met before at 5 p.m. at 5 p.m. So be there tonight at the Myers Park for church. We're gonna have church service. We're gonna worship and praise God. And so please don't miss it. God's been good enough to send a wave of warm weather to melt the snow and ice to make the road safe. And uh, if you're grateful to God, come to worship tonight and show God your gratitude. Thank you, Brother Clary, for the songs, they sure fell upon the theme we're preaching today, The Rock. I want to preach to you today what to do when your heart is overwhelmed. When your heart is overwhelmed. If you've been on the journey of life very long, you've had times where you felt overwhelmed. And how you respond to it is so important. We'll take our text and example from the life of David in the book of Psalm and of Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O oh God, and attend to my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for thou hast been a shield of shelter for me, a stone, a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings for thou O God has heard my vows thou has given me the heritage of those that fear thy name then will prolong the king's life his years as many generations and he shall abide before God forever O prepare mercy and truth which may preserve me so will i sing praise to thy name forever that i may daily perform my vows what is it that keeps you keeping on when everything goes bad or wrong have you ever been overwhelmed david here was going through a crisis in Psalm 61, but he uh, cried out to the Lord, which was his help. He said in another Psalm, my help comes from the Lord. He's my refuge in the time of trouble. And his heart was overwhelmed, overwhelmed, but he found consolation. And he expressed it in verse 2 when he said, lead me to thy rock. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. He had a, a rock experience. I remember one of my most delightful studies I ever did was on the, the eagle, which is a strong Bible typology, but... One thing we learned about the eagle, the eagle has a special rock that it goes to. It sits there to rest, recuperate, maybe heal from wounds, sharpen its beak or shed its feathers. But it has a special rock that is his rock. And that eagle goes to that rock for many reasons, but that special rock have you got a rock to go to in the time of your trouble? David experienced the rock. 
And he said, lead me back. He's going back to the rock. He's been there before. And uh, back in Psalm 18 and verse 2, he said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler as armor, and the horn of my salvation, and the high tower. Verse 6, I, my distress, I called upon the Lord. I cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him unto his ear. When did that happen? When David went to the rock, and he proclaimed in that same chapter, verse 31, for who is God? Save the Lord. Who is a rock? Save our God. 46. The Lord liveth and blessed be my rock. And let the God of my salvation be exalted. I used to sing that in a song. Blessed be the rock. And let him be exalted. And that's what we should do. David knew from his past experience that he'd gone through that God gave him victory. God gave him comfort. And uh, if God has done it before, God can do it again. Amen. The Apostle Paul, one of our favorite Christians in the Bible, suffered probably more than anybody else next to Christ in the New Testament. I call him the New Testament Job, but he suffered. He suffered battles from within, from without, but he testified, I know whom I have believed and am persuaded he's able to keep me against that day. What persuaded Paul? He said, because he's kept me, he preserved me, he brought me safe this far and he'll take me all the way. In verse 4, uh, uh, let's read that in Psalm 60, 61. And he said here, I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I'll trust in the covert, the covering of thy wings. Praise God. When he was, uh, when he was overwhelmed, he went to God. He went to God. Do you remember a time, the times that God has brought you through? Times maybe you thought you didn't, couldn't make it. You didn't understand what's going on. Has there ever been a time where you lost your faith? Oh, but we need ever been overwhelmed in your heart. The Hebrew word translated overwhelmed is a tap, A-T-A-P-H. It conveys a, a burden, uh, a great load, burden caused by carrying a great load in the heart, the word elsewhere. You know, this is one of those words in the Bible that the translators had a, one word from the Greek or the Hebrew, but many English words for the same Hebrew or the same Greek word. And that's the way a staff is. A staff is a word used in many places in the Bible. In 65 Psalm, it speaks of being covered over. In uh, Psalm 107.5, it speaks of when the soul fainted. Uh, in uh, Lamentations, verse 12, speaking of being unstable or staggering. Uh, in Genesis 30, verse 42, it talks about being feeble or growing weak. So this word is used many times, many ways, but it speaks of being overwhelmed, a state, uh, an overwhelmed, the Greek dictionary said, or the Hebrew dictionary, it's a state of being, a state of being. David didn't know what to do at this point. He was in a crisis. He was like a man that was sinking in the water 
with no lot, no boat, no life preserver. And he's treading water and he's getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And he needs help. He needs help. He don't know what to do. He don't feel like he could last much longer. He's like a man can pass about. You ever been in the deep, deep forest or woods at night with no light? How dark it can get. Or in a cave with no light will encompass you with darkness. That's what this word talks about, being compassed about. And so uh, he was overloaded with discouragement. And overwhelmed means to be engulfed in distress or depression. Where is David here in his life? He's like a man in a cloud or fog. He's under a great burden. He's facing uncertainty of, the, of tomorrow. He said, I can't see. I can't sense where I'm at. I can't make sense of what, where I'm going, what I'm going through or where I'm going. So he could not, he could not come up with an answer for his situation. He couldn't explain what he was going through. He didn't understand it. Uh, and when you're young, you thought you knew everything. But the older you got, the dumber you got. In other words, you realize more and more how much you don't know, how much you don't understand. It's amazing how children can try to argue with parents that know so much more than than them, but they think they're smarter than mom and dad. But oh, one day they're going to be where the parents are today and they will change their tune. Oh, David was crying out in this chapter, my soul is overwhelmed. He just didn't know what to do. In verse 30 of 65, 13, a staff, there's that word again. He was covered uh, it says, as covered with corn, uh, when the kingdom uh, is restored and there would be a tremendous harvest and would be covered, the fields would be covered with corn. And in the millennium, when King Jesus comes, Isaiah 9, 11 through 15 says, there's great hope for tomorrow. Then Jesus is king. There will be an abundant harvest uh, and King Jesus will come and the curses be removed and the blessings poured out all over the earth. That's a future promise. That's a future gift of hope. In Psalm 73, verse 6, I think one of the greatest psalms in the Bible for the believer uh, to overcome. Let me look at one verse there in 73. I have a heart-rending message from uh, Psalm 73. Psalm 73, verse 6, it says, therefore pride can pass them. Talking about the wicked, the unsaved, the anti-God, and violence uh, covereth them as a garment. They're full of pride and they're full of bar violence. The enemy the enemy, and then David complained that the wicked are prospering, but the, the righteous are suffering. And uh, at first, David in this chapter said, it makes no sense why God was allowing the wicked to prosper, why he was allowing of them to be so violent. It seemed like God wasn't doing anything about it. And David in this prayer, in this psalm, he felt totally surrounded by the evildoers. He felt covered up like a garment. He was felt covered with oppressive conduct, uh, overwhelmed with a, was, oh, he was overwhelming. A, he was appalled at what was going on and what God allowed. It was smothering him. It was choking him and it's choking the spirit out of him. You ever see a child of God or a preacher lose his spirit, lose his drive, his passion, his inspiration, his desire 
to serve God. Oh, we call it hopelessness. Uh, and, and when a person gets to where God, I can't take anymore. I can't do it anymore. I just can't. And it seems like the de de devil hops up on your shoulder and whispers in your ear, what good is it for you uh, to serve God? What good are you doing anyway? And, and, and who cares? Who cares? And he'll tell you, God doesn't really care. It's just talk. It's just talk. But in verse 11, he said uh, uh, that he knew that God cared, that God knew what was going on. In verse 12, uh, there in Psalm 73, it seemed unfair. The godly was perishing. Verse 16, it was more, David got to the point in that psalm where he said, it's more than I can bear. I can't take any more burden. I can't take any more going wrong. I can't take any more of desertion and oppression and, and betrayal and all the things that was breaking his heart. But praise be to God, David had a turning point. And listen to me today, dear brother and sister. You can come back to God. You can have a turning point. There's hope in your despair. Don't give up. Don't quit. Trust God. Look what David did in verse 17 of Psalm 73. All, every, he named everything. It was so bad for the righteous and so bad good for the wicked and he couldn't understand it and he was at the point of giving up and he said verse 16 it's just too painful for me i can't take it anymore and then he said until the word until that was a turning point what was the until what did it mean he said until I went into the sanctuary of God, and then I understood their end. Hey, when he went to the house of God, when he heard the word of God, and the Spirit spoke to him through God's word, he said, then I understood. The answer is the word of God. I said, sometimes God intends for you to be at the house of God to be in the worship service. And even though we may have to do it on the internet, but God will speak to you, but he won't speak to you if you're not listening, if you're not present, if you're not faithful. Hey, when until I went into the house of God, that's where the answers was. That's what he needed to know, to understand. Psalm 61, two, he said, my heart, is overwhelmed you know the heart here is the soul it's the seat of your emotions your affections and david in his heart was overwhelmed it seemed like he had no life no liberty he had overwhelming despondency he was brought and more darkness it was getting darker all the time he felt smothered he felt a burden his heart was heavy, which meant David had testified before that with the whole heart he would serve God and praise God and love God and seek after God and observe God and obey God. But now his heart's sick. His heart's sick. He's having spiritual heart congest congested heart, heart failure. There was too much weight on his heart. David was having, my friends, a spiritual heart attack. When he said, my heart is overwhelmed, he was having a spiritual heart attack. And if we don't do the right thing, as soon we can die from it. David was going through overwhelming burdens, overwhelming burdens. He, his heart was not right or not good or not sound and whole. Heart, heart aches, burdens of life. 
can overwhelm you and curse you when your spouse is not giving you love and is not faithful it can crush you sometimes things are just unbearable in our life things happen with our children that break our heart i know i broke the heart of my mom and dad i know i put gray hairs in my mother's head wrinkles on her face i can still remember pictures of my mind of my mother's agony over how I had disobeyed and hurt her. I was a prodigal son in the making and uh, I was rejecting everybody. I was rejecting God and everybody else in my life. I remember I was so foolish to think everybody else was the problem. <laughs> it's not funny, but I think of how, how dumb I was to think everybody else was the problem except me. But I know I was overwhelmed and I didn't want to live. But God uh, gave me grace and mercy I did not deserve. So many people today, what they're going through, they're hurting, they're in crisis. Some people are having family crisis. Others, health crisis. Some are having financial crisis. And heart attack, heartaches, burdens are real. And I know they're real. And you can let burdens overwhelm you to the point it will seem like you can't go on. And your spiritual life is just ended. But it's not. Second, last part of this message. How do we respond to the Lord when our heart is overwhelmed? People respond to God and, and, and like they once did. They'll get back to their first law. You know, uh, getting back to where you respond to the Lord. Nehemiah cried out in his battle with the enemy and with himself and with the devil. In Nehemiah 8.10, he said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. We need to find the joy of the Lord. There's so much we have to rejoice about, praise God about. Have you lost your joy? David said in Psalm 51, O oh Lord, restore to me the joy of thy salvation. There's strength that comes from joy in the Lord. The Bible said rejoice in the Lord always. And rejoice is not an emotion, it's a decision. And to do it, to rejoice in the Lord, and then the emotion will come. Oh, it's hard for a broken heart to have joy, isn't it? I know that. It's hard. You get overwhelmed with burdens and it's hard to rejoice. It's hard to smile. It's hard to laugh. It's hard to have real worship and praise and thank God. But the Bible said, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God. He didn't say in everything be thankful, but give thanks. We need to turn the tables on the devil. We need to reverse it and praise God. When the devil says quit, you say, I'm not going to quit. I'm going to serve God. As Job said, though he slay me, yet I will serve him and trust him. Maybe we can't solve the problem. And it is impossible for us. But the Bible says there's help for him. And David said, my help comes from the Lord. Listen, you can be overwhelmed. Well, my friends, you can lose your focus on God and you could turn your focus on the problems rather on the rather than on the solution or the problem solver David's or the word of God said get back to your first first love your first love for the Lord 
Get back to your joy. Get back to your enthusiasm. Some people don't even have a song of praise anymore. Oh, we need a desire to serve God. When you, when you were first saved, you had joy. You had enthusiasm. You couldn't wait to go to church. You couldn't wait to pray. You couldn't wait to read your Bible. And when the pastor said, if anybody got a testimony, you'd stand up. Wouldn't have to be begged like a piece of dead wood or a, a wooden Indian sitting on, on the street corner? No. We need to give, have a word of praise for God. Have a word of praise. It'll make you feel so much better. It'll bring back joy. Oh, yes, we have burdens. We get down. We have heartaches and disappointments. We have disappointments and in people, disappointments in God, disappointments in the church, disappointments in the pastor, disappointment in our family, disappointment in our children. But remember Job, he lost everything but his life and his faith. And that was tried severely. Listen, you may feel you've been let down, that God has forgot about you. Your expectations have failed. The fruit of your life in ministry has failed. You're disappointed. You're overwhelmed. You're disheartened. And you feel all let down, disappointed in people. I remember telling God after being betrayed, stabbed in the back by someone I loved, loved and trusted dearly. I told God, uh, this was when I was back in Kentucky. I told God, I'm never going to get that close to people ever again. I'm not going to get to where they can hurt me like that again. I actually said, I'm not going to trust anybody again. But I was miserable. And I eventually surrendered to God. And said, Lord, I'm going to trust people anyway, knowing that one day they may turn against me. You can be mistreated. You can be taken for granted. You can be forgotten, overlooked, ignored, betrayed, forsaken, lied to. And it can overwhelm your heart. As David said, my heart is overwhelmed and you may not know the answer there's no easy answer sometimes you don't know the answer to all the whys and the what for but remember this god is sovereign god is sovereign he knows all and he's in control he cares and he does what's right i believe that and i believe it by faith and I want to keep declaring that. I know, I know another thing about God. Not only is he sovereign, but God has made promises that will never fail. The promises of God will not fail. And I know God's going to keep his word no matter what. The Bible says the word of God cannot be broken. Praise God, there is a rock that we can go to. He told Moses, I'll make a place by me here in the rock and in the, I'll hide you in the cliff of the rock. And he put him in there and the glory of God passed by. Psalm, the word Psalm, you know this, most of you. The word Psalm means song. And actually there was five books of Psalms originally. Now they've combined them all into one. But each of the five original books of Psalms, each one corresponded with the Pentateuch, the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. And they were Psalms and songs of taking the words out of those, those, those books of the Old Testament and personalize them and sing it back to God. And they would make music in their soul and it would lift them up. It would lift them up. And David said, until 
he went to the house of God. He was defeated. He had no joy. He was finished. He couldn't go any further, but he went up to the house of God uh, and God met with him there. And he said, where you two or three are gathered together, I'll be with in the midst of them. Oh, I look forward to being together tonight. We need a good worship service. We need people to get their lower lip off the floor, lift their hands in praise, lift their voices in praise. Uh, sit, sitting there like a, 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 a <laughs> I'm not going to say what popped in my mind. We need joy. We need joy. Worship can heal your mind. A gra the grace of God can restore your desire and power to do what's right, praise God. Uh, oh, we see, look at Psalm there, one and two again, 61. And he said, uh, where is, and I wonder when I read this Psalm, I wonder about the context. Where was David when this was going on? Was he in exile? Was he hiding from Saul in the cave? Was he running from Absalom? Was he alone in the wilderness? I don't know because it doesn't say. But when his, he was overwhelmed, he prayed. He said, I go to the rock. That's higher than I have. <laughs> he cried out to God. He turned to God. David chose to believe God was true and the de devil was a liar. Listen, people, the devil's going to get in your mind. He'll use people, things, and circumstances. He'll use your own self to lie, lie, lie. He'll lie to you about God. He'll lie to you about the church. He'll lie to you about the Bible. He'll lie to you about your brothers and sisters in Christ. Believe God. Believe God and reject the devil. Reject his lies. Jesus, oh, he, the devil may speak some truth, but he laces it with arsenic. He laces it with poison of deception and lies. And Jesus it was in the garden of Gethsemane. He was overwhelmed. And it said in 2244, Luke, being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was as great drops of blood, the capillaries. He was under such inward stress in his soul that called the blood capillaries in his body burst. And he was covered with his own blood even before he went to the cross. And his blood has said great drops of blood falling to the ground. You know why? What happened? What brought that on? Because the father handed him the cup that was distilled with your sin and mine. And God showed him you must drink this cup and you must become what is in this cup? So Jesus saw the cup. Jesus, who was sinless and perfect and completely holy, he looks in the cup of your sin and mine. Every wicked thought, deed, desire, motive, intent, whatever. He saw it all from Adam on down. He looked ahead. He saw past, present, future. He saw your sin. God concentrated it. He distilled it in that cup in the garden. And Jesus said, oh. And I think he was saying, if there could be any other way, let this cup pass away from me. But then he prayed. Nevertheless, not my will, thine be done. And he took that cup uh, and his holy soul and he drank damnation dry for you and me. He was made sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Jesus was overwhelmed in the garden, overwhelmed with our sin. 
but he prayed and he persevered and to the cross and then he died there and he said it is finished theonoustos it is finished come paid in full paul was overwhelmed with what he was going through in the flesh he said i buffeted with a thorn in the flesh but god said us to keep you humble so i can keep using you paul to keep the pride down out of you so i can use you then he said i glory i glory in my infirmities that the power of god may rest upon me i love it when david said uh, his answer to his overwhelmed heart his broken heart his disappointed discouraged heart he said lead me to the rock that is higher than i i can't make it by myself he's saying lead me <laughs> i'm too weak lord I can't do it, but lead me to the rock that's higher than I. I read years ago the background to the hymn, Rock of Ages cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. There was a preacher in England. His name was Augustus Topladley. He was walking to the next village to preach and while on his journey there came up a terrific storm it could have been a tornado but anyway he went through a gorge in the mid dippling hills there in england and in that gorge he found a place hollowed out in the rock and he got under that rock and in that rock and watched he sat there he had a front seat to watch the storm pass by trees uprooted branches broken off hurricane or tornado winds were blowing and it blew all around him above him and around him and he saw it and he knew if it hadn't been for that rock he'd have been destroyed he he would have died he could not have survived uh, and he sat there and wrote jotted down rock of ages he saw that rock as a type of the lord jesus christ and he wrote the song rock of ages hide thou me and i pray that you will go to that rock jesus i pray you go to him right now Ask him to forgive you of your backslide and your coldness, your indifference. You're doubting him. You're disobedience to him. You're giving up on him. And say, Lord, I'm going to trust you because I love you. I'm in from the viewpoint of the cross where you died for me. I'm going to live for you. It's real. It's real to know Christ. We're going to be singing rock of ages for the toll Pladley song and i hope to see you tonight at the center at five o'clock our father god take the message speak to hearts that are discouraged and i know there are many because we are in troublesome times and lord wickedness has surrounded us and disappointments and heartaches have overwhelmed us. We've been betrayed. We've been used and misused and mistreated. And Lord attempts us to give up on you. But Lord, you're the one that died on the cross. You're the one that we serve. We've decided to follow you, Lord, if nobody joins us. Lord, I don't care what people say we care about you and what you say we don't care how many people doubt us and criticize us and misjudge our motives as long as lord you know that we love you 
I love you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for all you've done for me. And as old Lindy Claire would say, how can I not cry in heaven till I thank him for what he's done? Like old brother John Bishop said when he gets to heaven, he's going to ask you which hand it was that brought the great suffering in, into his life. And he wants to kiss the hand that did it and thank you for doing it. And I believe that was Paul's testimony as well. I believe it was Job's testimony as well. Lord, help us to have true, true Christianity. The real stuff, Bible stuff, not counterfeit, not pretend, not put on, not imitation, not wax fruit. Help us, Lord, to be faithfully true and real for your sake, honor, and glory. And save the lost, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.